to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you'll receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, BullingtonCapital.com. And now, here's Bill Bullington. Well, welcome back. Wow, it's been hot the last few days, hasn't it? It's just been kind of crazy. But I guess it's almost that time of year. It seems a little bit late to be you know, warming up like this, but who knows? It's just, uh, you want to be surprised? Just pay attention to what goes on <laughs> around you every day. Yeah, nothing ever stays the same. And you know, a long time ago, I used to say that nothing is as constant as change. And... Boy, I was pretty young when I started saying that, and I had no idea just how true that was going to be over the rest of my lifetime. And it's interesting, a lot of change, but a lot of good things happening. I mean, a lot of really good things. And I'm telling you what. I know it's a, uh, uh, actually, it is, it's going on right now. I mean, people are wondering, why is the economy so strong? Why is the economy so strong? I'm telling you, just like the, you know, when, uh, the late 70s or early 80s, they were putting in cable across the country. We didn't have cable then. Most people didn't have a cell phone. They still called them car phones, and they were really expensive. And uh, you see what that's done, right? <laughs> and I'm telling you that the grid, the, the rebuilding, reconstruction of the grid and the highway system, those two things by themselves could continue to uh cause the economy to grow fairly substantially just those two um, industries, I guess. It's mind-boggling. So the amount of money that's being spent. And it's going to continue to do that. You know that the increase in demand for electricity is actually outpacing the growth in the population. So if you've got demand that, that's growing faster than the population is growing by, that's probably a pretty good thing as long as you can afford to keep paying it. And as long as the Fed keeps printing money, guess what? You know, you'll probably be able to afford to keep paying it. Yeah. In fact, look around. It, it's hard to get people to uh, work now. Or they, actually, they've got too many jobs. Too many jobs that can't be filled. And that I don't see that going away anytime real soon, particularly where high a high level of skill is involved. You know, when you're rebuilding a grid there's all kinds of stuff that that needs to be done uh, the manufacturing of the the products that you're installing the installation of those products that you got to have a lot of skill for that the people that are going to run those over time they've got to be fairly um computer competent and you've got a whole bunch of computer networks to to track the doing the billing the marketing it, it's mind boggling how big this is and uh, I, I feel like you know I'm out here. Most people are not. I don't know what what's happening. Actually, I don't even know what most people are thinking anymore. <laughs> it seems to be really diverse. But I can tell you that this has been a time period. I've just been perplexed myself at at how fast you know the uh, the pandemic didn't. It, it slowed certain things down. That's for sure. And other things, it kicked into overdrive. That's mind-boggling. If you read the, the papers, there's a shortage of semiconductors. They can't make them fast enough. And all the, the companies in the, those industries, their stocks have done incredibly well. They're going to continue to do incredibly well. The valuations have not reached the same valuations they were back in the late 90s. And the demand is higher than it was back then. So that's kind of neat. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit, um, we'll talk about a little bit about stocks at the end of the show today, the, the third section, there's, there are three 15 minute segments. So we're going to come back and talk about that individually, what's moving right now. And uh, we'll come, uh, we'll come back to that in, in a little bit. The second portion of the, the show, we're going to talk a little bit about um, what do you do about fixed income? You know, fixed income 
typically makes up anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. And then back in the old days, some people had 100 percent of their money in short term CDs. You know, that was 100 percent fixed income. And you can't really live on that now because it's one percent or less. And that's really hard to do. So the second segment today, uh, I've got a couple of examples to go over with you. And these are uh, annuities. I know a lot of people, when you hear that, when they hear that word, they start to uh, shudder. So did I for a very long time. But like everything else, they've evolved. It's not the same old market anymore. It's changed. And they've, they've evolved because they saw opportunities and there are good ones, uh, good opportunities for companies to come in and take some of the risk off of the individuals and put them on the, the backs of the insurance companies who are basically paid to take risk. And if they're pretty good at it, and they must be because you know, Warren Buffett, by the way, I think about 50% of his revenue comes from insurance companies that he owns directly. Good business. <laughs> good business to be in, I guess. But anyway, we'll talk a little bit about that. And it's it's kind of important. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, I just pulled up in a, a quick example. Somebody who's going to be 67 this year, that's typically full retirement age. They put 100000 bucks into this. And a year from now, they're able to take out $5,956 a year. That's guaranteed for the rest of their life. Unlike most annuities when, or a lot of other older annuities, when that person passes away, what's ever left in the contract will actually go to their beneficiary. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in the second 15 minutes of this program. Now we have three 15 minute segments, by the way, in case you were wondering, and I'm going to turn back to my favorite topic is actually economics. Um, why? Well, Back when I was in school, you know, in ancient history, <laughs> before anybody could afford a, a car phone that I knew, <laughs> I didn't know anybody that could afford a, a, a car phone back then. But the uh, uh, they used to teach us all kinds of stuff, and I'm not, I don't know what they teach today, but it was really fascinating. It was called the dismal science because it was really incredibly difficult to make a, a forecast that was highly accurate. It was incredibly difficult. In fact, we didn't have all the satellites and the uh, radar for, for weather, which means the weather reports, or the weather forecasts were typically wrong about 70% of the time. They looked like all stars compared to the economic forecasters. I mean, they almost never got it right. <laughs> but today and and still to, actually the weather's gotten a lot better the weather is you know now that they have satellites and they can see the where these storms are going uh, they can kind of let you know they're not actually forecasting they're just watching you know the current developments and i guess there is a little bit of a forecast there but with the uh, economy they've created a whole lot more things to have to watch which is is fine because the com computers have come a long way mainframes are not even a, a word anymore but you've got systems, uh, Amazon Web Services, you know, Google will come in and work with you. Many of the old IBM, IBM still out there working with people. Anyway, the bottom line is they can keep track of a lot more stuff, but it's still highly unpredictable. That part has not changed all that much. Still very highly unpredictable. So what are you supposed to do? Well, that, that's where the diversification thing comes in. Um, you're looking at levels of prices in, in things over time. You're looking for a company. If you're looking to make above average returns on your investments and who isn't, then you, you want, might want to pay attention to the trends that are going on within the economy. Then it may be not be all that, they may, they may not be all that visible. And uh, I don't know how long have you been talking about the semiconductor industry on probably three and a half years or so. And maybe even for, I don't know, I have to go back and, and look at my old radio logs. But the bottom line is it's been a few years and it's done very well. And valuations are still not obscenely high. Some of them are a little bit high. But given the growth rates and the fact that there are shortages and they're having to shut down production because they can't produce the semiconductors fast enough, that's kind of music to the producers, semiconductor producers' ears. So... What looking at that? What are other uh, major trends? Well, you've got the electricity. Um, that's 
Those are harder, by the way, to prepare all the equipment, to go out and install it. It's very expensive, and it really, uh, the companies that are making that stuff, they're only a handful. They all know who each other are, and they're looking at each other, and they're, they're competing on these government bids, or bids from utilities anyway. A lot of them are government funded, but the bottom line is, there aren't that many players and they know what their margins are. That's a tougher, that's a tougher business. That, that's a really tough business because you've got uh, a lot of suppliers there and um, you also have a lot of people that are buying. But the bottom line is I, I think the growth from that is more, uh, it's more evenly spread out than it will be in other industries. The other industry I like really well is healthcare and, and there are three uh Funds through Fidelity, I, I put a model together that I use for the healthcare stocks because in, in this case, they're not ETFs, they're actually funds. Um, and by the way, feel free to write and say, hey, hey Bill, I want to see that HS uh, healthcare and semiconductor model that you have. I'd like to see what that looks like. And I'll be glad to email that to you. Uh, it's a, a report that I put together looking at those industries, how well they've done over the past five and 10 years, which is, uh, by the way, they've done, ex- stocks have done incredibly well over the last five or 10 years. I would not forecast that out into the future if this, as if it's going to repeat itself. Okay. I just wouldn't do that. I'm just saying that they've done very well. The reasons that they've done well, the reason that, the main reason healthcare has done well is that the population in this country is aging. I mean, every day, something like 10,000 people turn 60. You know what happens when you, when you get up in your sixties, things start breaking down. Mine, I'm, I'm 58 and it's mine starting. (laughs) I get a new pain every day. (laughs) And, uh, that's what I get for having played football in college. That was the, uh, man, if I could go back, (laughs) I would tell myself, Hey, (laughs) go to the military. (laughs) But uh, anyway, so the fastest growing segment of the population, 16 over, uh, what happens? Your body just wears out. That, that's what happens. Your body starts, you know, the wear and tear starts taking its toll. So I would look at the healthcare industry as, well, you know what? The demand for healthcare is very strong. That's what you'd like to see. The demand is very strong, just like the semiconductors. The, the demand is very strong. And that, that's a good thing. Because having strong demand is probably nearly half of the equation to setting up an industry um, that has publicly traded companies in it that will do pretty well. Why are they going to do well? Because the demand is strong. Now, you've got to have people that can meet that demand and do it at a profit okay, that's you know hopefully fair, hopefully fairly good. And a lot of companies are, are able to do that. Why? Because there's a lot of demand. A lot of people go to school and learn about these things. And a lot of the companies that are providing those services have been around for a long time. This is not their first time around the block. So that's what really leads to some pretty good gains over long time periods. Now, if they get to a point where these stocks got in the late 90s, I can't believe I'm saying that in the late 90s. You know how many people listening uh, to this show or ever listen to the show? were actually around and were investing, were paying attention in the late 90s? <laughs> Not many. So anyway, really giving my, I'm really making myself feel old here. This is what's really happening. But, and it's not just that industry, by the way. Uh, it, it's happened before in a whole bunch of, you know, that's just way, the way it goes. You look today and, and a lot of kids, uh, they like to get in on stuff. They have don't really have a good idea of what something should normally sell for under normal conditions. What are the long-term averages and all that? And uh, it, it's made it's been made so easy to open an account and start trading that they just don't pe- put a lot of time or attention into it. And, um, and that's okay. I mean, they'll learn eventually. Uh, it's a little painful to learn that way. And, and when they do learn, what they're going to realize is that, hey, this is a lot like work. That's why I have a job because yeah, it's a lot like work. You, know, you might not be thinking about this 12 o'clock in the evening or late into the morning, but I am. <laughs> and uh, 
the first thing that I think of when I get up. It's the last thing I'm thinking of when I go to sleep. So it's it's there. There's a lot of stuff, uh, but only if you want to, you know, feel good about what you're doing and give yourself a really good chance for success. And uh, if you don't want to do that, and you know, I don't know, try to find an advisor that's going to put the the time and effort into it. There are lots of things you can do today. Uh, the uh, what the way the economy is going. One of the things that's really shaped you know, a big part of the economy are, is the financial services industry. It's huge, astronomically large. Actually, it's one of the major sectors in in the almost every stock market index that's available. And it's really changed. I can tell you because I'm a member of that industry, and it is mind boggling how much change that we've had. And it's mind-boggling how many products have been created over the last few years, over the last 10 years. It's mind-boggling how many products have been created. In one, on one hand, it, it's a really good thing. There are a whole lot of people that are employed in this industry that weren't there. The industry still uh, has some growth to it, which is amazing because so many things are done with computers. It just shows you how much more the market's grown than the people that are working in it. And so that's pretty good. Uh, what's also really tough is I, I never get bored. Uh, it's not it's not tough. I, it's, it's actually good. I never get bored. You know, creating new products every day, every single day. There are several thousand funds that exist that didn't exist five years ago. Five years ago, they weren't here. And uh, so I I think it's kind of cool. And I, I really like the how you can go out and you can find funds that are doing what you would like to be able to do if you were doing it yourself. That's basically what I do. I like to find funds and I have these models and uh, they comply with various government regulations. Why? Because they have to. Because I want to keep my license. <laughs> so anyway, I hear the music. That means the uh, my first segment is over. If you've got any uh questions or phone calls, you can call us 216-901-0945. This is Bill Bullington on 1420. Be back right after these messages. Factorydirect.com. Got up before the alarm. Sunlight replacing the stars. Finding my phone in the dark. And we're back. Hey, if you'd like to call in, the number is 216 901 0945. 216 901 0945. Uh, if you'd like, if you heard something and you'd like more information on it, you can go to my website, BullingtonCapital.com. Uh, you can click on the contact us page and write your question down, and we will try to get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. And uh, yeah, so we were just kind of talking up a little bit about the uh, uh, talking about the economy and uh, how strong it was. The two of the leading industries in the economy: healthcare, semiconductors. And here, here's the thing. Whenever there's a, I, I get this a lot. People come in or they call in or they write in and they, and they're always asking me, well, what is the one? What's the one stock that's going to benefit most? Well, it'd be great if you could actually answer that question. Um, and the reality is it, there's rarely one and doing that's really dangerous you know, to put up a, a lot of money into one stock. All stocks are extremely volatile. And putting all of your money into one stock is just not a smart idea. It's not a smart practice. Now, are you going to overweight certain stocks? Yeah, I overweight stocks. I do it all the time. The uh, But I don't, uh, there's a plan. And we'll talk about that plan in the last segment of today's show when I when I go over how to handle the individual stocks. And um, I'm going to go over uh, two ways. One is more traditional. It's, it's also uh, harder, I think. And then the other is actually a little less traditional, but it's easier. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. I, I did want to kind of finish up really quickly just on the uh, 
on these indexed annuities. They're, by the way, when you say the word annuity, a lot of people um, have, um, I, and I understand it completely. They're uh, they have reservations, and I I get it. You know, I've seen a lot of annuity product out there. Quite frankly, it's just crappy. It's just not very good. And there are lots of them, but there are some really good ones out there now. And one of the ones I was talking about was here's somebody that's uh, actually I ran re ran another one. Let's say you're going to be seventy next year, and for a hundred thousand bucks, they would give you sixty three hundred dollars a year. You know what you're going to get in a CD? And less than a thousand dollars. Is it the same as a CD? No, <laughs> this is really different. It's going to be invested. You're going to pick out various investments uh, from the selection that they offer. And if the investments don't do as well as the guarantee, then you get the guarantee anyway. Okay. If the investments do happen to outperform it and you get, that's your number and your income could potentially go up. Um, I will tell you that it's probably unlikely. You'd have to have a really great year. I mean, there, there are years where that happens, but not very many because the guarantee is pretty high. Okay. So there's another product out there, by the way, that's also an annuity, but it's got much, it has room or actually I think it gives the opportunity for much higher growth. The guaranteed income is lower, but it goes higher if the investments perform well and they, you're allowed to pick from Fidelity, Vanguard, T. Rowe, all the best, in my opinion, some of the best mutual fund complexes in the world are in that product and there's no sales charge in, there's no sales charge out. There's no penalty if you wanted to scrap it. The other one's got penalties. So um, it's called an investment-only annuity, by the way. And that that's kind of a pretty big deal. That's a really big deal, especially today. They're, they're willing to put a floor on the income in there for you. Um, you can also get a guarantee on the uh, the principal to your beneficiaries if you'd like. and But you don't have to. You can add those features on or you can... Decide that I, you know, I just want to, I just want tax deferral, and I want to pay as little as humanly possible for that. Okay, let's see. Uh, that's what that was designed for. Was a very low cost way to be able to invest in stock funds on a tax deferred basis, and uh, not have any uh, sales charges if you decided that you wanted to get out of it early. So, again. I know this is really hard, especially when you're driving to, to try to get that all down. So feel free to go to my website and request some information. I'll send you a couple of links. You can go, you can read about it if you like it and you can call me back. If you have questions, no big deal. Okay. It's basically a big part of what I do. So, um, having said that, I'm uh, just looking here. So this is the second session. Hmm. Yeah. I kind of skipped ahead of myself a little bit there. Sorry about that. But maybe I'll just spend a uh, a little bit more time talking about stocks then. I know that's uh, what I used to do my whole show on. It's hard to believe that uh, it's been, wow, how many years is it? 1996? That was a long time. <laughs> 24, 25 years. That's amazing. Um, actually, longer anyway. So here's big, when people are looking at stocks, I, I get this a lot. I think for personally, I think today the uh, the number of funds that have come out are it's just unbelievable. We were talking about that a little bit earlier in today's show. The fastest growing segment of the financial service in industry has been exchange traded funds, um, still growing fast. I, I can't believe they're still coming out with new funds. They're 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 really stretching now because almost every strategy you can think of has multiple funds out there that are doing it. Uh, it's, it's important, I think, if you're going to be in investing to understand what those funds are doing and how they're doing it. Why is that important to me? Well, it's important to me because I want to know what's happening with my money. That, you know, that, that's the first reason. The, the second reason is the more you know about that, the less likely you are to panic when the market is selling off because you'll know to expect that, and you'll you won't panic when all, some of your funds are outperforming the other funds, um, maybe by a lot. That's not going to be a cause for upset. Why? Because you expect that, because you know 
Because you sat down, if you didn't have time to read it yourself, you didn't have time to back test and you didn't want to buy the software, which I don't blame you, it's expensive, to, to go back and, and do all these back tests and see and make comparisons. And somebody else needs to probably do that for you. And that's a, uh, but you don't have to. This is America. You know, and that's the one thing that uh, really feel strongly about. I, I really try to be the advisor that I would like to have. You know, here's what I'd like to do. Tell me which parts of it I don't have right. Um, or tell me why I, I shouldn't be doing something. Or if I'm on the right track, let me know that too. And that's basically how, I, how we operate. You come in, uh, we take a look at your situation, uh, give you an idea of, of what you could reasonably expect, how that's going to occur, and you get to ask questions, as many as you want. And uh, it's basically the Billington Capital method of customer service, you know, client service. You want to know what is most important to you and what is the best way of getting there given all these options that you have because there are a ton of them. And you know, next week, what I'll start to do, I'll, I'll take a particular fund that I have in, in one of the models that I run. Uh, this model is, is basically for people who are retired, uh, looking to generate a little bit of an income from their investments, also looking at growth. And I'll take a, I'll bring in the descriptions of how the funds that I chose for that, those particular parameters were singled out. So if you're around next week, you can always listen to it. You can also go to uh, iTunes and you can find this through Google. Uh, I mean, through Google, the, the podcast, it's on iTunes. It's on my website, BillingtonCapital.com. So I'll start to pick one of the funds and we'll go through each of uh, over the next, I don't know, 12 weeks or so. I can go over each fund that's, that's in the portfolio that we use as kind of a core portfolio. It's not kind of a core. It is the core. Yeah, I've chosen those funds for a reason, and uh, we'll go through those reasons, and we'll go eat through each one of them. And these are the things that you should probably have a, at least a decent idea of, and you, you probably won't remember it. Uh, I mean, but it's a good idea to review what you have, why you have it. Uh, it's a, a, a not that hard once you've been doing it for for a while. It, it would be really difficult to understand the differences for somebody who's relatively new because they, they the number one way of, of picking funds is looking at past performance. And if that's all it ever took, I got to tell you, uh, first of all, my life would be a lot easier and I wouldn't be doing this for a living. I'd be doing something else, but I wouldn't need to because you just go in and look up the fund that's got the performance you want. And there you go. You're done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it worked that way. And the reality is, it, it doesn't work like you want it to. Mac, in fact, the market is highly unpredictable in the short run. And, and the shorter of a time period that you look at, the more unpredictable it gets. Over long time periods, like when I'm talking to people who are in their 40s now, or even their early 50s, you know, life expectancy is probably going to start to get a little bit longer as soon as we get past the uh, pandemic and they get that under control. But there's a pretty good chance that somebody retiring at 65 years old is going to live another 20 years at least, at least. So if you're in your 40s now, you know, you're probably going to live as long in the future as you've already lived up to this point in your lifetime. So you've got a, uh, uh, that's a long time. And making a couple of adjustments or just being aware, being aware of the kind of risk you're taking, what you're doing, I think is uh, highly productive, can be highly productive to your financial future. And you're going to need it. Because what I started to say was that's a long time. And I think that if you look out over the next 10 to 15 years, the way that things are going and the way that things are growing, not just here, but internationally. And, you know, the international emerging markets, they have not kept up with our markets. And what's really wild about that is that they're growing faster and, and see, if if it this just goes back to my point where some things just don't make sense. It doesn't make sense 
that emerging markets would grow faster, that their stocks are growing faster than the stocks here in the United States, yet their share prices have been lagging for almost 10 years now. That's mind-boggling. At some point in time, it's my guess that those companies in those uh, countries around the world, you know, the, the value is going to be recognized at some point in time and they will close the gap. What does that mean? That means they're probably going to outperform by a lot. Now, I don't know when. If I, man, if I knew when, I wouldn't have to work. Yeah. Just put all my money on red when the time was right and, and there you go. Yeah. But, reality is they are growing faster than we are and their stocks have not done nearly as well. So at some point in time, I think that probably rectifies itself. Now, so you probably want to keep just a little bit in those, uh, in those country funds. Actually that just, you can do that with a couple of uh, ETFs. Now what's, what's really interesting is the international that's like Europe. Okay. What do we call that? What are the, I, I a mind is going on me. The more developed countries, the countries are actually, there are a lot of banks and a lot of uh, financial markets actually that are older than our country is. Okay. So uh, settled in Europe, like France, Germany, England, you know, Finland, all those countries, there's a fund there. And, and it's actually done better. It's still lagged. If you look over the past 10 years, and it's basically these guys are just getting back to where they were in 2007. Can you imagine that? 2007. What year is it again? <laughs> That's a long time to uh, to recover. But over the last 12 months or so, pretty good. And it didn't drop quite as far. At least I don't think they did. I'll have to double check that. But So anyway, my, my point here is that you should really understand that that can happen. If, if you knew that that had the potential to happen, but keeping some portion in there, rebalancing your portfolio, maybe once every year or every other year. That's another thing. People think you need to be doing something all the time. No, you don't. You will ruin a good portfolio by doing that too much. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever made a, uh, uh, something, uh, whipped cream, you know, you whip whipped cream, it gets pretty stiff. If you kept doing it, it's going to go back to liquid and then it's going to separate. <laughs> You're going to ruin it. it. It's the same thing with, with your stock funds. There's a certain amount that's necessary and it's not as much as you think it is. I guess that's one of the things that probably surprised me personally. It's really not as much as you think it is. You don't have to be looking at your portfolio. And by the way, I can promise you the people that do that, the people that look at their portfolio during the day to see how much they are up or down over yesterday, they are joining that group this company called Dalbar studies every year that would be 10 times better off never looking at it. And it's so tempting to want to go in and play around with it. In fact, the last segment of today's show where I do talk about the individual stocks, this, that is like less than 20% of my money anymore. I have less than 20% of my money in individual stocks. Why? Because a, it's time intense, uh, time intensive, uh, doing the research, even as long as I've been doing it, it takes time. B, I'm probably not going to beat some of the funds I have in my portfolio who are doing a lot of the same things that I'm doing, but they're running it completely emotionless. It's all math. It's all numbers. Now that I hear the music, I got to take a real quick commercial break. You're listening to Bill Bullington right here on 1420. Stay tuned because when we come back, we will get to those individual stocks. Young man on the side of the road Lost and beat up with nowhere to go Smells like a hangover from days ago He does what he can to survive And we're back. Hey, this is Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon. 
Feel free to go to my website, BullingtonCapital.com. You can reach me. You can uh, fill out the contact us form, and I'd be glad to try to get back with you as quickly as possibly can. If you hear anything that you uh, would like clarif- clarification on, uh, maybe you want to come in and set up an appointment, that's fine. Uh, there's It's free. There's uh, no pesky salespeople are going to call. It's just me. <laughs> I have uh, support staff. Uh, but uh, we we let you reach out to us because uh, you know I, I know what it's like to get uh, uh, hunted down and <laughs> we just don't like to do that. So anyway, if you'd like to call in today, there's still a few minutes left. Two one six nine zero one zero nine four five. Two one six nine zero one zero nine four five. And right before I start talking about individual stocks, I did uh, want to just really quickly go back over. I I did an example of a seventy five year old who wanted to take income from his portfolio for next year. Uh, And if you want to take income from these, by the way, and this is something that over the past couple of um, months, if you're not taking income, actually these firms are refusing the assets. That's crazy. But uh, yeah, they're they're, they're actually turning away business. So this is really for somebody who's looking to take income and doesn't like the rates that they're seeing. So as you get older, by the way, these go up because if you were 75 today and wanted to take income next year on a hundred thousand bucks, they would give you $7,309. Okay. So you'd be 76 at that point in time. They'd guarantee that until you die, no matter what happens to the investments. Uh, if you pass away before you collect the money that you've invested, that's the minimum that your beneficiaries would get. So there's still a, uh, like they call that a refund option in the old days. I don't know what they call it today. I forgot, but Anyway, so a lot of them don't do that. A lot of them have a, you know, it's once and done. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave that alone right now and let you go ahead and uh, contact me if you want to see more information. And I'll just send you a link. There's another one that I like a lot. It has no sales charge in or out. You can add those types of benefits to it, an income benefit and a, a benefit for your beneficiaries. They're very inexpensive. Um, that's a really good one, too. Uh, that's called the investment only annuity. And again, I'll send you the links to those. You can play around with it as much as you'd like, and then give me a call if you'd like to. And having said that, I'm going to go to the stock portion. I know uh, there are a couple of investment clubs out there that are going, all right, you know, this is what to wait for. (laughs) And uh, we are, by the way, um, the building owner that where our office is located came to us and asked us if we would consider moving to a different building because the, the firm next to us wants to expand. So I'm like, well, it depends on what kind of deal you make me, you know, what are we doing? So we actually, we came to a, 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 an agreement and it looks like we'll probably be moving across the street. It's uh, actually, I could almost throw a rock as far as we're going, but it's a very nice building got a meeting room uh, downstairs. Actually, it's got space where you could have quite a few people. So I'm hoping that maybe the uh, investment clubs, uh, you might want to use that, that those new facilities. And that's, I'm kind of excited about it. So uh, I think it's a, a, a good intelligent thing to do. We're actually able to lock our lease in for another six years. So that's good. Um, moving is a pain. I don't know if you've ever had to move your office, but that, that that's pretty painful at some time. Ours is pretty easy because it's, you know, I'm a minimalist. You know, we just have exactly what we need, uh, nothing that we don't. So having said that, I'm just looking through the scans. And by the way, there's a guy, his name is uh, Mike Seeger. He publishes this list every day and it's on lookoutforthebull.com. Uh, this is the, the list that he's publishing and uh, he runs them at different times, by the way. This is, uh, I ran this one just before I started. And what's really weird is, is they'll update their data and you can run the scan and it may be different a couple of hours from now than it is from a couple, from the time that you ran it originally. So don't get too upset. It used to upset me and then I just figured out yeah, it's just the way it is. But when he publishes the list, we're using the same parameters. Uh, but if you run it an hour or two later on the same day or a day after, it, it's going to have slightly different names when they, uh, they make adjustments to the data. And uh, unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it is. But uh, it's still not bad. You're, you're, they're they're going to show up eventually. So what are these companies? These companies have been selected because they're above a certain size. okay? And that size is $500 million. 
if a company's not above five hundred million dollars, the chances of a a big mutual fund paying attention to it, uh, or even an exchange traded fund, are extremely remote. Okay, so uh, what we're trying to do here is increase the odds that institutions are buying the stocks that we're examining. Why? Well, because they're the ones with all the money. If they're buying, then they can move that share price up quite a bit. That makes sense? So anyway, that's one of the criteria. Uh, the other criteria is that the volume in shares today is above its average volume over the past 90 days. Why? Because we want to see people uh, that, whether it's people or machines, we want to see that the volume is increasing uh, because that means it's under accumulation, at least for now. That can change in a heartbeat. The other thing I really like to see is that the it closes up in the in the top half of that day's range. It closes. That's we used to call that closing strong. I actually have mine set at the top twenty five percent, so I like to see it closing in the top twenty five percent of today's range. Now, once it it and incidentally, I also I don't like to buy stocks. I don't like to invest in stocks or trade stocks that are below ten dollars a share. And I know the rookies, you know, get upset by that and. You keep doing this long enough, you'll figure out why. So I'm just going to leave it at that. You'll figure it out why at some point in time if you keep doing it. Last part that I use is is a thing called a price to sales ratio. And a price to sales ratio is kind of like a price per square yard in carpet. You know, if you're paying more for it, it you want to it should be a higher grade. If you're paying more for a stock, then it should be a higher grade, should be higher quality. If you're paying less for it, you might be getting a deal. Maybe it'll be that, and that's that's it. That's the whole logic behind that that rule. There's a certain point where you know if when you see carpet and ten dollars per square uh, yard or, or foot rather is really expensive for carpet, that should be a really high premium um, brand of carpet or high grade whatever. I don't know. It's probably got gold stitched into it. I'm just kidding, but normally it's about five or six dollars per per square foot today. At least, at least today. I don't know. I actually I haven't checked on that in a few months and the pandemic's made a little, the cost of a whole lot of things go up. So I should probably take another look at that. Anyway, my, the bottom line is you're look, you're trying to get an, an idea of what the company should be selling for versus what it is selling for it. And the, the limit for me is if the price to sales ratio is greater than 10, I'm not really interested in it because the average long-term average for the stock market somewhere between two and three right now it's at 3.5 the S&P 500 is the uh, might even be 3.7 right now but the um, so it's not slightly on it's on the high end but that high end is a lot lower than what I have the computer set to the computer set to 10 so it's set you know the average long-term average is about a third of that so I'm, I'm I think I'm being okay there I'll let a lot of companies in now, the last thing I'm looking for is that over the last 90 days, this has performed, the, the, the stock price has performed in the top 10% of all stocks. Okay. So all that stuff, and if you really want to uh, get this down again or you missed it, just go to the Lookout for the Bull website. I wrote it all and put it down in there, and Mike publishes the list every day. So having said that, I'm going to go up, and the very first company that comes up today is a company called ScanSource. Now, I remember this company from a long time. It's it's extremely volatile. Uh, it's a technology company. I'm not even sure what they do. It says uh, distribution. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't know a lot about it is when I've looked at it in the past and it's come up, I just really didn't like it. <laughs> just, the bottom line was I just didn't like it. Yeah, so that's what's cool about you know when you're picking your own stocks, when you're especially when you're doing trading. This is considered long-term trading, by the way. I hope that I can buy one of these stocks and it's just going to run and run and run and run. And uh, just keep going, and I can hold on to it, and eventually it'll stop me out. That doesn't happen very often. Occasionally it does. Uh, occasionally I'll buy something and get stopped out that afternoon. <laughs> that happens. You better get used to that. But anyway, so this one is not one that uh, I can remember a lot about. I've seen it come up a lot of times. Uh, the next company that came up, um, VLRS, good-looking chart. Okay, I have no idea what these guys do. Oh, wait a minute. It, it, they're in the airlines. So good looking chart. It's in the airlines, but this is a uh, foreign company that trades in the United States. Excellent looking chart. I might even, I, if I were, if I had money 
to invest, I would see no problem in buying this, putting a uh, 10% stop on it, and then maybe a 15% trailing stop, or just use a 15% trailing stop right off the bat. Just don't put more than 5% of your money in there. That way your total risk to your portfolio is less than 1%. Think about that for a second. And by the way, on, the, on that website that Mike publishes this list every day, it's a, uh, we call it the 1% rule. Don't, re- don't risk, at least in theory, more than 1% of your principal. If you got 15% trailing stop or even a 20% trailing stop, and you've only got 5% or less of your money in there, your risk is at 1% or less. How cool is that? Anyway, sorry I only got to two of them. The last one, Signet Jewelers. I say that one because I've seen the uh, company that's down the street from me. Uh, the symbol is SIG. Uh, I will actually have to leave this in. I swear I'll try to get more time on this next week, I promise. Yeah. Anyway, you've been listening to Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon. Have a good week, everybody. Good luck and good investing. You just caught another edition of the Bullington Capital Report, broadcasting every Saturday at 11 a.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. If you have a question and you'd like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or online at BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC.